So here's the gag. A number of you, myself included, had been in search for the best moisturizing shampoos for afro and curly textured hair. So in this video, and probably a few more videos in the future, we're going to be doing exactly that. We're going to be talking about how you can go about finding the best products within this category and gradually starting to build up our A-list. Get it? A-list. A for... Oof, tough crowd. Anywho, as expected, I'm also going to be showing the exact framework and ingredients to look out for when trying to select products that fit the bill. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because you don't want to miss this. So I also wanted to take a minute to give you guys a quick personal progress update. If you guys have been following my journey for a minute now, you will know how difficult it has been for me trying to juggle working full time, studying basically full time, as well as trying to produce highly informative and helpful content on a regular basis. Now, even though I'm still working my way up to being able to produce more content more regularly, it's now the second quarter of the year, which by the way is crazy to me because where is time running to? But it is getting to that point where the initial drive that we had and resolve that we we had at the beginning of the year is starting to wane and it's becoming increasingly difficult to focus and stay on track with the goals that we set out for ourselves at the beginning of the year. I mean, it's definitely the case for me, but I'm cool to pretend like it's not the case for you guys too. One of the things that has continued to help me get a handle on juggling these things and just generally being more productive, as I've mentioned in previous videos, are some really great courses that I've managed to take on Skillshare. So Skillshare is a super easy to use online learning community with literally thousands of informative and engaging courses courses that you can take to help you along your personal development journey, whether that's trying to pick up a new skill, or if you're someone like me who's currently living 10 lives, how to manage your time better and be more productive. So I'm currently working my way through Dora Katana's course on productivity. I believe it's called Get Productive Time Management Hacks, Strategies and Tools. And not only has it given me valuable insight on what I can do to manage my time better, but it also breaks down the how-to into practical steps. And you guys know how much we love a good practical breakdown over here on this channel, so you know it's got my vote. Now you guys know I wasn't about to say all of that without putting you on. So Skillshare are offering the first 1,000 people who either use my code AfroBearToby or click the link in my description box a one month free trial so you too can access all the right courses that you need to help you along your journey of personal development. So huge thanks to Skillshare for putting all of us on and also for sponsoring this video. All right guys, let's really get into it. Okay, let me start with this very important disclaimer that I'm pretty sure I've made in some of my previous videos too. When we talk about products being moisturizing or hydrating, especially in the textured hair community, typically what we're describing is a product that makes our hair feel softer, smoother, and just generally more manageable. Now, the true definition of a product that is moisturizing is one that adds water to your hair. And if we wanna be a little bit more generous, I guess this can also include ingredients that help your hair to retain moisture. But, and this is a very big but, just because our hair has taken up moisture doesn't mean it's going to be smoother or more manageable for it. If anything, a more likely result is that the swelling from the water absorption will cause the cuticle layer to lift slightly, which of course will cause more surface tension between your hair strands, making the hair feel that little bit less smooth and noticeably more rough. Look, if you've ever tried to manipulate your tightly curly or coily textured hair without applying any conditioning products on it, then you probably will have experienced what this feels like in reality. Yeah. It ain't cute. Now the electrical charge of conditioners and or conditioning agents on the other hand, not only cause your cuticles to lay flat, but it also deposits a film over your cuticle layer, reducing the static and friction, resulting in the hair feeling softer, smoother, more slippery, and thus generally more manageable. Emollients like oils and silicones also work in a very similar way in this context. So with this in mind, how about we get into the framework that's going to help us identify and select the best moisturizing slash conditioning shampoos. So in this case, step one would be identifying what we want and then we're going to work backwards to figure out which ingredients we need to be looking out for that will help us meet those needs. Now generally when I'm thinking about what I want in a conditioning shampoo there are a few key things that I expect this shampoo to have. One and this is arguably the most basic thing given that it's a shampoo the product is going to need to make the hair of whoever is using it feel clean. Now the second thing is you would want this shampoo to have a good lather i.e you would want a little of this product to go a long way because let me tell you marketing a shampoo to textured hair people that requires half the bottle for one use that should be a hate crime. Yeah, I said it. Okay, the third thing that I'm looking out for in a conditioning or moisturizing shampoo is the product's gonna need to have some good slip. And that is to say, it boosts manageability of the hair during use. And the fourth and final thing is that we want it to leave our hair feeling softer, smoother, and like I said, more manageable, but especially, and I cannot stress this enough, after 
it has been rinsed out. So generally speaking, these are the things that I think most people are looking for when they say they are looking for a hydrating, moisturizing, or in this case, conditioning shampoo. But let me know in the comments if there's anything that you personally want out of a conditioning shampoo that you think I've missed out of this list. Now it is worth noting that many of the ingredients that will go into this list all fall under one large umbrella. And so I feel it's important to give a little bit more context here. Y'all cool with that? Okay. This particular ingredient group is surfactants, also known as surface acting agents, hence surfactants. So creative. And in the context of this shampoo picking series, here are the key things that you need to know about them. Ingredients in this category are commonly used in hair products and other products, but this is a channel about hair care. So as I said, we'll keep it in context. Now surfactants can typically be subgrouped according to their ionic charge. So you have some surfactants that have a negative charge and these are called anionic surfactants. On the flip side, you have surfactants that have a positive charge and these are called cationic surfactants. And then you have surfactants that have both positive and negative charges and these are called amphoteric surfactants. Or zwitterion if you want to be fancy with it. And then finally, you have some surfactants that just don't have a charge at all. So basically like the Switzerland of surfactants. And understandably, these are called non-ionic surfactants. And depending on the desired use case, they can be used as detergents, anti-static agents, emulsifiers, foam boosters, ETC, ETC. In a nutshell, they can be used for a lot of things. Now let's address needs one and two. When it comes to the cleansing aspect of shampoos, you will typically find two kinds of surfactants. And those are anionic or negative negatively charged surfactants and amphoteric surfactants, which are the surfactants that have both positive and negative charge. Now, the first of the two types of surfactants, the anionic surfactants, are typically used in the formulation as primary surfactants. And this is due to their superior detergency properties in that they are exceptionally great at removing buildup, product, dirt, and oil from whatever surface that they come into contact with. So in this case, your hair and scalp. And then you have amphoteric surfactants, which are commonly used as secondary surfactants in many shampoos and are often used as foam boosters to create a more luxurious lather with the shampoo, amongst other things like arguably making the formulation a little bit more mild for people who have sensitive skin and or scalp. So how about we get into a list of commonly used ingredients in these categories? Yeah. So commonly used anionic primary surfactants in shampoos include sodium lauryl or laureth sulfate, ammonium lauryl or laureth sulfate, sodium C14 to 16 olefin sulfonate, sodium lauryl sacrosinate, and sodium lauryl methyl isothionate. And then for commonly used amphoteric secondary surfactants, there are two main ones that you'll typically find used most commonly. And those two are cocoa betaine and cocomidopropyl betaine. Now, while this list of ingredients is by no means exhaustive, the ingredients I've just mentioned are so staple in commercial shampoos that I'm 100% sure that every single one of you watching this video will currently have or have used in the past a shampoo that contains at least one or two of these ingredients within the first four ingredients. I mean, feel free to check your shampoos and let me know in the comments if this is true for you too. Okay, whilst you're down there, if you're finding this video helpful so far, then please go ahead and give this video a like for me so more people can see it. And also, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Right, let's get back to business. Okay, now let me address the elephant in the room since y'all wanna act like you don't see it. I'm gonna talk about it. You may have noticed that some of the anionic surfactants that I've just listed are <sighs> sulfates. Yes, my list includes sulfates. Cuff me. Now this really is a story for another day and a whole other video, to be honest. But let's just say that to my knowledge, the literature doesn't conclusively support the notion that sulfates are automatically harsher on your hair and skin than all other anionic or amphoteric surfactants. There is quite a bit more context here, of course. So if you would be interested in a video on this, then please do let me know in the comments. But let's just say for now that they're staying in this list from what I understand of the science and they are no more of a hindrance to how moisturizing or conditioning a shampoo is going to be than many other the popular non-sulfate alternative shampoos. And we don't have to go very far to see how this works practically. I mean, show of hands, how many of us have tried a sulfate-free shampoo that still left our hair feeling ashy? Now on the flip side, I've also tried a number of sulfate-containing shampoos that have left my hair feeling very soft, very smooth, and definitely more manageable. However, if you're still skeptical about this, it is still perfectly fine to opt for a sulfate-free shampoo, so long as they meet the other ingredient requirements that I'm about to share with you. Okay, now let's move on to needs three and four and try to identify the ingredients that is gonna give our hair more shine, make it smoother, softer, and more manageable. Now there are three ingredient groups that I want to highlight in this particular section. The first of which is cationic surfactants. Yeah, I know. 
more surfactants. I mean, I did give you guys a heads up, so. Now, unlike their amphoteric and anionic counterparts, you'll remember that cationic surfactants are positively charged. So when used on the hair, which is negatively charged, these surfactants are attracted to and bond to the surface of the hair's cuticle layer, leaving a shiny film on the hair, resulting in the smooth, frizz-free, friction-free feeling that we all associate with moisturized hair. And it is for this particular reason that they are used as conditioning agents. So common cationic surfactants that you'll find in your shampoos and conditioners include behentramonium chloride, behentramonium methosulfate, cetramonium chloride, stereomonopropyl dimethylamine, and finally, a wide range of polyquaternions. So polyquaternium 7, 10, 15, you get the gist. Now, the second group of ingredients that I'm going to be adding to this list in order to help us address needs three and four is fatty alcohols. Contrary to the type of alcohols that most people in the hair care community tend to be wary of, these particular types of alcohols are derived from the fat and plant oils, hence the name fatty alcohols. Now as ingredients, they are dense, creamy and wax-like and when used in hair products, they leave a film over the hair that adds slip and softens the hair. You will typically see these ingredients listed in products as cetyl alcohol, sterile alcohol or cetyl alcohol, which is just a combination of the two fatty alcohols that I've just listed. And now for the final group of ingredients that I'm going to be mentioning in this video, oils and butters. Now I know y'all don't cancel these, but hear me out. When I say oils and butters, I'm literally just talking about the usuals. So olive oil, coconut oil, shea oil or butter, mango oil or butter, silicones and the likes thereof. Now in addition to the fatty alcohols and cationic surfactants, when used as part of the formulation of what should be a conditioning or moisturizing shampoo, these ingredients will help to add shine and improve manageability of the hair. So now that we've gotten all our must-have ingredient groups, let's put it all together. So on the left hand side of this table we've got our four main needs and requirements. So when we're looking for a shampoo that will likely meet those needs, here's how we can approach that. Firstly, to meet our need for a shampoo that cleans exceptionally well, we want to look out for an ingredient that can be classified as an anionic surfactant. This will typically be listed first in the ingredient list after water and like I said before will be the primary surfactant in this formula. This could be but absolutely does not have to be a sulfate. Secondly, to ensure that the shampoo has a good lather, and will go a long way even with a little bit of use, we want to see an ingredient that is commonly used for foam boosting. As a secondary surfactant, this ingredient will likely be listed immediately after the primary surfactant and should be an amphoteric surfactant, like for example, cocaminopropyl betaine or cocoa betaine. Third and finally, and arguably most importantly, to ensure that the shampoo meets the need of increased manageability, softness, sheen, and slip, i.e. all the important things that we associate with a moisturizing shampoo, we want to be on the lookout for cationic surfactants, fatty alcohols, and as an added bonus, oils and or butters. Now here's the thing, knowing what to look out for when picking such a shampoo is an important part of the equation. However, even to the most seasoned of professionals, ingredients can look right on the container, but in order to find the ones that really work well in reality, there will always be the need to actually try it out. This is simply because two products could have the exact same set of ingredients, but in reality act like two starkly different products. The concentrations of the ingredients used in the formulation could be different, and perhaps even the method used to formulate these products could be different. Additionally, despite the fact that these ingredients offer certain proven benefits to the hair, ceteris paribus of course, the extent to which you personally will experience those benefits in your own hair will ultimately be determined by your own specific set of hair attributes and or characteristics, i.e. someone with more damage to their hair will likely feel more positive effects when using a conditioning slash moisturizing shampoo than somebody whose hair is comparatively in better condition. And the same goes for if the shampoo is not sufficiently conditioning or moisturizing. Someone with more damaged hair will feel the effects or lack thereof of such a product more potently than somebody whose hair is in better condition. You feel me? So here's where you guys come in. You guys are really good at highlighting great products, usually more than I can ever try. So for the rest of this particular series, I'd like to draft and create a ranked list of the best shampoos in this category. As a guideline, I will ask that you recommend shampoos that fit into the spec of what we've discussed in this video. And if it doesn't necessarily fit the spec of what we've discussed in this video in theory, but works really well in reality, then go on ahead and recommend that too. And I will be your humble test subject for the rest of this series. And the plan is simply to just journey through the set of science guided product trials until we have our completed A list of best shampoos in this category. So I'm going to kick off the recommendations and I'm going to start by putting up these two bad boys up for trial in my next video. The Rizzo's Curls Hydrating Shampoo against the main choice Easy on the Curls Detangling Hydration Shampoo. Oof, that was a mouthful. Now I've selected both of these shampoos primarily along the guidelines of what we've discussed in this video. So in the next video of this series, these two shampoos are going to be going head to head to find out which one actually works better 
in reality. Until then, I want to see your suggestions in the comments. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye. Mwah. I finally stopped running now With you I found my peace somehow Let go of every thought that was holding me back yeah. I'm in love with you in every way That joy you give me every day